Hey guys, I am Nick and today we will be creating this pottery making effect in Cinema 4D, all procedural, no modeling, just uh, modifiers and deformers. I will walk you through the essential procedural modeling part, setting up a composition, lighting, texturing and rendering parts. If you enjoy my videos and find them helpful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, give this video a like and check out my Gumroad for project files. So pretty a while ago I spotted this effect done by Roger Kilimanjaro and at that time I had no idea how he created this effect. But yeah, right now I found a way and want to share that with you. Alright, so let me show you what I've got here for the first part of this tutorial, the modeling part. Well, I have just uh, added a back plate here when you middle mouse and then you have perspective top right and front and here in front I've just grabbed some sort of bases from Pinterest and then I zoomed in, aligned it to be like X and Y zero and then here in 2D I just added these nulls and these are just essentially yeah just null and uh, here in the object tab you could just change the display to the circle it will make it a bit more easier to spot your nulls and then I just added all these nulls one by one here you can see all of them then I dropped a tracer node and you can find it here uh, nope you can find it here at the MoGraph here's the, your tracer just drop it here and enable it then add all your nulls here and here what's important when you add trace trace link you add all your nulls here in, into the trace link you want to start with the top one and then add them in the order they go down that's the only way how tracer will correctly trace uh, these nulls and then tracing mode set to connect all objects, trace vertices checked, handle cloners nodes only, type of the spline should be cubic, intermediate points uniform, number 100, just so it's smooth, nice. And then we add a lathe, or lathe, or I don't know, node, it's here under the these modifier groups or generator groups. And uh, we drop our tracer inside of our lathe. Uh, let me show you the result will be your ways. And here basically the I upped the subdivisions because I wanted smooth and then I will apply the displacer modifier. So I really want it to be smooth. Uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. Caps, actually caps, we don't need them, but still we have pretty dense mesh but I'm not worrying about that, to be honest. Uh, I just want as many polygons as possible for a really smooth displacer. And here you can see that if I enable the displacer, you can see all these lines and like imperfections protruding. Important thing, you want the tracer to be in the lathe, correct me if I'm wrong, and then the lathe and the displacer should be in a null in a group or yeah in a null uh, because if you add all these nulls they also will be displaced and now comes the fun part so i just made this animation to be 450 frames and what i'm doing here every 90 frames i am just changing the position of these nulls and then as it changes you can see that it actually morphs in a very natural way how it would morph when somebody would be shaping on a pottery wheel also important thing is to is not to forget about your lathe itself we should rotate it I wanted it to rotate pretty fast, so it's uh, 6480 degrees in the time span of 450 frames. But uh, yeah, I pretty much like it. So about the displacer, here the shading is just a turbulent noise, but the, it's scaled down uh, in Y axis, so it's more like a strokes, not a clumps of noise. 
and uh, I'm animating it at a speed 0.5 and loop period is set to 3. Uh, it doesn't actually matter that much because of the how fast the rotation is, but that's the modeling part. And let's check out the composition and the framing. So here is my kind of like minimalistic composition. And uh, one thing I love to do, for example, this one is vertical for the Instagram. It's 1080 by 1350, I think. And if you hold Shift V, uh, you get to this menu viewport here and uh, you can click on view. And then here's the opacity slider, which is set to, I think, 10% by default. But I like to crank it up to like something 95 or 94. So I really have only the frame itself visible in the view and I just clearly see what will be rendered. So the setup here is pretty abstract. We get our ways, our octane camera and uh, for all the like product renders and close up shots, I'm using focal length of the camera set to be 80 portrait. So what do we have here? So I start without like this accent, uh, little geometries. So basically what I did, I added a backplate, uh, just a plane. And uh, here I have a bool. Uh, it's a cube with a cylinder, small cylinder that makes this cute little uh, protrusion. And of course, then I add a wheel, which also, by the way, matches the ways uh, spin. So don't forget about that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, basically, that's it. Very simple setup. You can go with uh, some sort of abstract room or a real environment, but I don't like that much. So I just wanted something that's focused on the on this, let's say, product or the key of this animation, which is ways. And I don't want the environment to be too uh, overwhelming. And I really want the attention to be on these uh, morphings. And then, yeah, but that's that's too simple, right? And then I just added a small sphere because spheres are just awesome. And thumbs up if you also like to use spheres in any sort of project. <laughs> and then just, yeah, two small bricks here. Nothing, nothing too crazy or fancy. But that's my composition. And let me show you the lighting for this animation. So these days I try not to use HDRIs that much. They help a lot if we are dealing with uh, specular materials. But at this project I just made it super simple with uh, four uh, lights. And let me show you where they are located. So first of all I always start with a backlight. So that's just so we can really make those vases stick out from the background because the starting color for these vases is gray and the backdrop is also gray. That's why I really need to kind of like add the silhouette, even that uh, the final scene is will not be that dark. And here I'm using for the distribution, I'm using this gradient. It's a simple C4D uh, to the circular gradient. And uh, I want that because of if we just use the area light, you see it lights everything a bit too much, but I want it to be focused only on this ways here. So that's why I added the circular gradient. And then I added a top light, which basically fills in the scene with a natural low shadow light. And it's power set to 10 and it's also targeting the null, which is basically our ways it's located here. So after that, I wanted to introduce a bit more contrast from one side. And I think the brightest side is uh, the one from the left. So those are here, this area light, it's what go here. And uh, just something similar from the right. So that's my setup. Uh, I think it's pretty cool in terms of how how soft it is, but also, yeah, the silhouette is uh, really visible. And it... all right, now let's set up our materials. So for the materials, uh, it's pretty easy. I don't create these myself, get it from the back. I'm using nearly in all the, my projects, but still 
uh, just uh, yellow semi-glossy plastic, purple semi-glossy plastic goes for these accents here. And uh, wall is pretty textured. I think it's some sort of a plaster or something. Let me zoom in. So that's a wall. And uh, here it's uh, like something like stone or, or something. Um, yeah, here you can here you can see it. And for the waist, which is interesting part. Uh, so basically I've got this like unglazed ceramic or pottery uh, texture and then I got just a gray material it's uh, I think it's even uh, yeah it's I think it's glossy all right it's glossy but it's like super rough all right and then I added a mix material and added a dirt node and what it does it if you invert the normals it will apply more of this ceramic material on the harsh edges and right now our harsh edge is here right and that's how I did this unglazed effect and then I have the gray color um, and I'm just animating the value of the diffuse and here you can see how I'm doing that Basically, every 45 frames, I am keyframing it to change the color to different color, right? And that's basically it. So, uh, so also here in the camera, I modified the camera imager, I upped the exposure, compressed the highlights a bit, gamma, all that, all that cool stuff. I think I even using custom lot. And then I just render those as a PNG sequence and compose in After Effects. And here we have this result. All right, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful for you. And if you like it, please let me know in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, tag the project in Gumroad. Anything of those really helps my channel to grow. And as my channel is growing, I am able to dedicate more time to create these tutorials and share my knowledge with you. I will be back very soon. Bye.